I've been surprised to see that one of the most commonly asked questions in regards to this new update is are the geese actually fixed? And as you can see, we're out here on Hirschfelden today to determine the answer to that question, and it works out quite well. One of the most common requests in terms of things we can do with the ARs is to do a goose hunt with the 22 ARs. So we've got both the Predator and the Shadow, and that's gonna be it. No shotguns, no other weapons for the geese, and we're gonna see how we can do. Now, for anyone that was unaware, the issue with the geese to begin with was that they were not coming into decoys, so you could still spot them, you could still shoot them at a distance with a 22, but you can never actually get them in close. It looks to me at the moment like they are coming in, and because we're using the 22, in theory, we don't really need them to, but just for the sake of really determining if they're coming in properly, we'll let these ones get in close like they're gonna potentially land, and I would say though, it looks fine, they're kind of circling around like they're going to land. And that is the one animation I was waiting to see. So these geese are going to come in and land. I think they may actually spook they're going to come so close. I was going to maybe let them go ahead and land. Let's just, uh, let's go for this. Just instant kills from that 22. And I think that may be a part of the 22H update. Like I thought they did something with the 22 LR as well. This is even without a scope. No problem aiming with the iron sights. In theory, I should have switched to the uh, shadow there, but we'll go with the predator. I thought there was... Yeah, there's two more. Let's actually go to our other weapon this time and see if we can get the last two. If we can, it's been kind of slower shooting. I don't know if we're shooting too high, too low. They might end up escaping on us, or I might just be shooting way too high, but... Pretty decent for the first flock, considering we let them get close. It's actually, in my opinion, better to not let them. I think we're going to have one getaway on us. I hear others coming in. We're going to just try a kind of group of quick shots here. Hope that we can maybe get one to land just like that. And not the best, but that'll be the full flock. And like I said, now we can kind of go with the more ideal. I would say those are kind of flying upwards. We did spook this flock. Make sure there's nothing big. There were a couple of decent ones. Probably should have stuck with the same 22 considering it was actually loaded, but I do like the Predator better. There's a four. I like the fire rate. It's just a little bit tough to kind of get used to this. Again, the geese were broken for a while, so we hadn't gone after them. That's a brown hybrid. Evidently, from what I've heard, they are a lot more common now. I don't know what it is. I kind of almost like the... 22 Virant better for the fact that it just feels like you're actually firing the lack of recoil while it helps with this. I don't know, it just kind of almost seems like nothing's even happening then when you miss. Then uh, it kind of confirms that type of feeling. Not the best angle to be shooting at geese with, but that also is a brown hybrid there if that's not that obvious. Well, I think that one's going to end up getting away. Just not going in our favor. We spooked a level 5 coming in that time. See if we can do better. It's got a brown hybrid beside it. We should be able to make shots like that. I wonder if I'm trying to lead too much. There we go. Okay, so it's apparently going to take a little time to get used to the lead we need to put on these guys again. I'm going to pretty much chalk it up to my shooting and not the 22s. But I think if we can get better at the lead, the fire rate will actually become a much bigger aspect of this. It's just when, I guess when, when we have to try to determine the lead, like we can't really make use of that extremely fast fire rate. There we go. Got to hit that one. Now there's two level three brown hybrids. Unfortunately, I'm guessing that one's gonna get away as well. Now, like I said, they are a lot more common now than they used to be. Yeah, I'm not going to worry about that too much. We have a bunch to go and claim. We have the level 5 down. We have potentially a gold brown hybrid down. I want to say this is going to be our level 5. It is in a 9.1. One of our biggest, and we almost let it get away. Is that our second diamond now with the AR-1522? It is because we shot the light brown... Uh, Diamond Turkey over on SRP. That will be an official Trophy Lodge edition, 193 meters. 
You know, I didn't recognize that they were that far away. A lot more of this is probably falling on my shoulders as far as the lead that I'm placing on the geese and the distance estimations I'm making. And again, you know, maybe as I hunt these more, I'll get a little more used to it. I do feel as if, at the moment, maybe the 22s wouldn't be a fantastic option. Now, I would have said in the past that the 22 Viren is about as good a goose weapon as you can get. Consistently, we're able to take out entire flocks with it. Now, whether it is the capacity of 10 rounds that really makes that difference, or whether it was the frequency that we are hunting geese, that kind of remains to be seen. In theory, with two guns, we've got a 10 round capacity anyway. So, I would like to say more of that's on me and being a little bit rusty with hunting these. In the meantime, I hear more geese coming in. There was a level 4 uh, guild. Once again, they're going to be spooking. We can at least try to see there's another light brown. I mean, they really just are basically in every flock, and it wouldn't be too bad if we could maybe run into a light brown diamond eventually. We had that with the turkeys, of course. I don't think typing in the chat is going to get us very far in terms of actually killing these things. That was a lot better when, because I would have zeroed that for 50 had we not just claimed that goose and saw it was 190 meters or something when I didn't expect it. It might not be that bad. It might just take that little bit of getting used to it. And then now we have, what, three? I've been calling them light browns, brown hybrids, to go and claim there was the one there that level three would have had a shot at being a gold wherever we actually got that at. Might take a little help from Sir 12 to find that. Or even if he's struggling to find the track, it was one of the last ones we spotted. You can see on the hunter mate there, the little icon. It made gold at 6.9, gold at 6.8 for geese. Now again, they're a little more common. We've got a couple of what I would call like the original brown hybrid kin of the geese that were still making gold, but when they were a little less common, I'd prefer to keep those in the trophy lodge. Not that you can tell the difference minus the date um, that would be in the description of the animal, but it's still nice to get a gold one. Maybe it'll go in our second trophy lodge. I'd like to think maybe with a little bit of practice, and the fact that we're not dealing with spooked geese non-stop now, we might be able to do a little bit better. There's a bunch of potential trophy geese in this flock. I don't know whether to go open sights again. That worked pretty well on that first flock. I think I want to keep the scope on for when they flee and maybe start to get them as they go over our head. Although the Argus is probably not the ideal here. Definitely be firing a lot of shots, but it may still work. I just... I guess I should have just brought 122 because I am just naturally going to that reload instead of trying to switch weapons. I think it, it's got good potential here when we get these close shots. Whatever it is, and again, it's probably me. Yeah, I'm not doing well with the longer shots necessarily. We got all the big ones it looks like. So that might actually be our last flock because I, I definitely don't want to only shoot geese on a day where it's only been, I guess this will be our second day, of being able to hunt with the AR. So I want to take the 308 out a bit. There's an 8 scoring level 4. Not too bad. One of the level 2s. I didn't even realize we shot a gold brown hybrid again. Again, we'll tax it. Maybe we can kind of fill up some of the smaller plaques in our second lodge, but I'm not even sure what we're going to go and do. Maybe Fallow on Te Auroa might be fun. 7.7 .7 for that one, and... Another level 2, I think this would be our last one then up here that had a chance of being a diamond level 4. One of these two would be. Or in fact, one of these three. That's a gray. I don't know if that was in the group we just shot or if it was over here the entire time. I also cannot seem to get the claim screen to come up, so let's just kind of double back. 7.9, so nothing even that close to being a level 4 diamond. Got that level 2 picked up as well, and... Yeah, I think we will maybe take the 308 over to Te Aoroa. Now, I don't intend to do a whole lot of fallow deer hunting here, but I could not resist the temptation to get out of here on a map that's got big game and just use this 308 again. It is absurd what you can do with it. I mean, you see a single long shot there. That fallow took like three steps and went down. I think, you know, red deer are obviously bigger, and that is going to be something we're doing in the pretty near future. I actually went to Quattro Cleanest earlier just to kind of see what the map looked like, and 
it's going to be a very different grind for sure. I just want to kind of get my head wrapped around that grind before we go and hunt them and kind of start that next grind. And they're bigger, but I, I still think this 308 is going to be such a huge asset in doing that grind. And who knows what other great one may come out in the future, but I would certainly think the 308 is going to be the first pick for a lot of people doing any grind such as that. That is a weird looking fallow. That might be one to tax just for the sake of seeing what that looks like in the trophy lodge. I wish there would have been more kind of side by side over here. I chose this lake basically in hopes of being able to get like three shots off all kind of rapidly back to back. I don't see that we're going to get that opportunity, but with relative ease, I think we just shot like six or so. Only two of them I think were potential golds, but that's kind of just the circumstances we had and the 308 did absolutely fine. And of course the one level three that had a shot at making gold, we actually shot into the spinal cord. Was an insta drop still, but of course we lost out on that one opportunity to get a gold get there. So I think this one was a little bit too small. And then our wonky one there is our only other one that has a shot. Maybe it's not as weird as we get up close. It's just kind of super wide. I mean, 186 for that rack. This is kind of like that level three rack that we messed up, except just way flattened out. And somewhere in here, the inner spread gets to be a much larger number. I think we'll tax. I don't know what we'll do with it. Hall of shame or something just for looking weird. Maybe one day we'll do like a hall of wonky rack. I don't know why we never started that, but that can maybe be a thing. So then just two more fallow to go. This one and one of the first ones we shot over on the other side. And we do, of course, have to go back to the trophy lodge still for our goose that we almost lost out on. And you know what? We did pretty well today. No uh, mass zone deletion like we did on the previous hunt. I'm still wondering what exactly that's going to do to our red deer grind. Hopefully it's not that bad. Just going to have to maybe discover where that zone gets moved to. Apparently there was one other buck over here, but wouldn't have been a big one. But anyway, let's go back then and get our goose placed. And I decided it was time to officially upgrade our... What I've been calling like an impromptu goose multi mount. It's not a proper multi mount, they're just all individual geese on plaques, but I kind of like what we have going for this. So we've never had a 9 plus diamond here. I think we only shot one 9 scoring diamond ever, and it was right on that 9 mark. So got one over the 9 score, 9.1. And of course, there are a couple of rares I still want to upgrade the Baldusistic and the Melanistic, which that one was so close to 6.7 to making gold, but. Now with the key sacks to fix, that is something we can continue to work on, and who knows, I'm definitely going to be testing the 22 AR some more and kind of just getting more familiar with goose hunting again and seeing what I assume to be the case that it was probably me uh, with not the best shooting, but either way, I'm looking forward to getting to be able to actually hunt keys again. It's been quite some time and that was a lot of fun to get back out there and of course seeing level 5 and that big scorer definitely helps as well, but anyway. That is officially going to do it for this video, so thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you next time.